are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whatever time of the day you are watching this video. This is lesson one of GBS Beginner English One at Xinjiang Young University. We are focusing on using the Speak Now two book from Oxford Picture Dictionary, Oxford University, and we will be covering lesson one in today's video. Today's video is focusing on where you are from. We're going to first, we're going to cover on the student book, cover some of the main parts of the student book. We'll then look at the workbook and wrap everything up together. Now, as you think about the question of where are you from, this question has a very nuanced meaning. Because where you are from can change depending on where you are. If I asked you in my class here in Korea, where are you from? A correct answer would be, I'm from Korea. But that's not always the question that I'm asking. Those are the words that I'm saying, but not exactly the question. When I'm asking you, where are you from in Korea? Where are you from? and we're in Korea, I wanna know what city you're from or what province you're from. And that's where if I meet someone from the same country, I would ask them, oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from the United States. Me too, where? Oh, Texas, me too, where? Houston, oh, me too, which side? I want to know more information. So asking somebody where you are from there's a lot more than just asking the simple question of, hey, where are you from? I'm from Korea. I'm from the United States. Think about location because location can change the meaning of it. Because if you say, ah, where are you from? I'm from Korea. No, 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 no. You need to answer that as far as your location. So let's get started with our lecture today. Today, let's start off with some vocabulary. Now, we meet new people all the time. And when we meet people, there are some topics that are just not acceptable to talk about. And then there are some that are perfectly acceptable to talk to anyone. This list here has five to or six topics, excuse me, that you may or may not be comfortable talking with and depending on who you might want to talk with. For example, money. In most Western cultures, money is something that's not really talked about. It should be talked about more, but your actual money and how much you have, it's something that's not really talked about. You can talk about it with your family. You might talk about it with somebody close, your spouse or maybe somebody very close, but most of the time you're not going to talk about that with everyone. Your school grades, with me, your school grades are between you and me, but your school grades, who you talk about them, sometimes depends on who's paying the bill. If you're paying the bill for your school, you don't need to discuss your grades with anybody. You're an adult now. You don't have to talk about it to anybody, but if mom and dad are paying the bill, I'm afraid you're going to have to talk with them about your grades, especially if you're doing the great and really getting good seeds. No, God! Yes, you got to talk no, to them. God, please, you're going to no, have to talk to them no. about your grades. Hopefully, they're going to be the good grades. So please work on that and make your good grades. Personal problems. Ah, now this is one that gets tricky. We all have problems. We all have things that come into our lives, and some of them. We may feel comfortable talking with friends. Some we may feel comfortable only talking with a, uh, a family member. And you always have the option talking to a counselor. If you have personal problems, I highly recommend. If you don't have someone that you can turn to to talk to, talk to a counselor. If you need someone to talk to, you can always come and talk to me. I may not have the answer, but I may be able to direct you to somebody who does have the right answer. So. Talk to someone. Don't think that, oh, nobody will understand me. I'm all this. This is nothing. Nobody can do this. 
I'm gonna be all alone and somebody's gonna make me crazy. Oh no, I did do something really bad. Talk to someone. Anyone. Talk to someone. If I can't find the right person, I'll find someone who can. Now your hobbies, your interests, this you can talk about with just about everybody. But how much you're comfortable talking, that's up to you. Your home life and your family life, again, this goes with personal problems. How much you feel comfortable talking with other people. I personally am comfortable. I can talk about just about anything. There are some things that I choose not to talk about, not because I'm uncomfortable with them, but people that I know may feel a little bit uncomfortable about it. The same thing, marriage and relationships. With marriage and relationships, be very careful what you say, especially if you're putting it on the internet. Don't air out your dirty laundry on the internet. It's just, it's just not worth it. Just don't do that. So think about these conversations, what you could talk about and with whom you could talk about these. We'll use this in class next week, talking about this with your partners. Now, we're going to listen to a conversation between Nicole and Brian talking a little bit about where they're from and how they're doing and some good stuff from their conversation. So let's take a listen on their conversation. Hi, how's it going? I'm Nicole. Pretty good. My name's Brian. And where are you from? I'm from Canada. And you? Brazil. I went to Brazil last year. Really? Wow. Did you travel alone? No, I went with friends. It was fun. Listen, I'd better get going. All right, so this is kind of a picked up conversation, kind of abrupt. It's something where they're actually talking about what they're doing. They're trying to figure out what they're going, they're meeting, hi, where are you from? One from Canada, one's from Brazil, kind of getting a little bit of introduction. You probably won't have a conversation this short in an introduction, but it does happen. And he breaks it off at the end and says, listen, I better go. I got to go on someplace else. It's not a rude way of ending the conversation, but it's kind of like, hi, hi, hi. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I got to go. Whether or not he has someplace else to go or not, we don't actually know. We're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. The benefit of the doubt means we're going to assume that he has good intentions and that he's just not, hi, I don't like you. I'm going to go away now. He wants to know more information. Maybe we'll come back later. So when we go on and find out a little bit more, you will listen again. Now, we're going to practice this in, in class, and we're going to practice talking about where you're from and where you're going. Not this exact dialogue, but we'll practice something similar. But listen again. There's going to be two changes to this one. And when they make the two changes, try to figure out where they would go best in this dialogue. Because you could use them in a couple of different ways, a couple of different places. There's nothing that says, ah, I have to use it just here. They use it in one place, but maybe there's another way we could do it. Let's take a listen. Hi, how's it going? I'm Nicole. Pretty good. My name's Brian. And where are you from? I'm from Canada. And you? Brazil. Have you been there? I went to Brazil last year. Really? Wow. Did you travel alone? No, I went with friends. It was fun. Listen, I'd better get going. I don't want to be late. All right. So he changes up the conversation a little bit and leaves a little bit of blank spaces there. See what you can do to figure out how you can change this conversation. Now, in a conversation like this, and when we get to class time, it's not memorizing this dialogue. I do not want you to memorize dialogue. But if somebody asks a question, you follow it up. And ask a follow-up question. So he said, I went to Brazil last year. Sounds great. Really? Did you travel alone? 
no, I traveled with friends. We should ask a follow-up on that, but he doesn't give a chance for a second follow-up. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and pretend that she did. Now, when we're having a conversation, there are different ways that we can start the conversation. There are different ways we end the conversation. Starting the conversation, you start off with simple things. Hi, hello, what's up? Hi, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Now, be careful with nice to meet you. Why do you have to be careful with nice to meet you? That's because you can only use that one time. You can't use nice to meet you every time that you see someone. Nice to meet you is one of those one time only greetings. You can say, oh, nice to meet you the first time. If you're meeting the person again, ah, nice to meet you again, or nice to see you. You have to use something different. Don't get locked into using only one greeting. Uh, you notice at the beginning of my video and the beginning of my classes, I start off with hi, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I borrowed that from the Truman Show. And the reason that I use that is, I actually, I don't know what time of the day you're watching this video. You might be watching it at three o'clock in the morning, five in the evening. You could be watching this during your dinner. You could be watching this anytime. I don't know. So I greet you with multiple greetings. I try to use different greetings. Now, everyone will fall into patterns where they use a similar greeting over and over again. These are good ways to start a conversation. Now, when you want to finish the conversation. Oh, I'll see you later. I'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll, we'll see each other next week in class. Hey, it's been good. I got to go. Okay to end the conversation. Whether you have some place to go or not, or you just like, you know what, I don't want to talk to anymore. Uh, I, 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 I got to go. Find some nice ways to end a conversation. My suggestion to you find three to five different introductions and different ways of ending a conversation that you feel comfortable with and get those so you can use them well in your vocabulary. That way, when you do have a conversation, you have several ways to start a conversation and to end that same conversation. So we're gonna practice when we do introductions, we'll be doing this next week in class. So let's have some fun with this. Come in, ready for some introductions. Next, listen and practice and notice how they pronounce contractions. Now, what is a contraction? A contraction is a shortening of a word or phrase by omission of a sound. So when we take out something, we have to replace it with an apostrophe. Um, when we have what's, it's short for what is or what was. What's that? What is that? Instead of having two words, we're going to shorten it with the apostrophe and just make it one word. Now, we're going to make it into one syllable. What's? We're going to make it into one syllable. I'm or she's. Maybe we'll make it into two syllables. Isn't or doesn't or even make it into more. So let's listen and how, see how they put these words together. Page three, pronunciation. A, listen and practice. Notice how we pronounce contractions. One syllable. What's? I've. I'm. It's. She's. They've two syllables isn't couldn't doesn't didn't wasn't wouldn't excellent now we get to the pair work down below we're going to talk the difference between an open question and a closed question. When we ask a closed question, we are asking for a one or two word answer. 
If I said, are you from Korea? You can answer yes, no. Simple answer. Kind of kills a conversation though. But if I ask, where are you from? You have to give me more information. I'm from Korea or I'm from here. You can't answer with just one word, but you have to supply the word other than yes or no, making it an open question. When I ask you about your best friend, is your best friend tall? Yes, no, closed question. If I ask you, tell me about your best friend. Now I'm asking you to give me more information. Open questions want you to give more. A closed question, it's good, it gets you information, but it stops the conversation. We don't want to stop the conversation. Remember, this is a conversation class. We want to get a conversation started between you and whoever you're talking to. Now, when we get to class, you're going to walk around and talk conversations with everybody. Now, I have some special activities planned for next week. When you come to class, you're going to see what they are. They're fun. They're icebreakers. Now, you may say, well, what's an icebreaker? <laughs> well, here, they're introducing themselves. Hi, my name is Mark Harrison. Hi, how's it going? I'm Jenna Gibson. No, oh, I'm from Sydney. Where are you from? You can tell people information and get stuff from them. But when we do our activities next week in conversations, you're going to be trying to ask people information with either closed or open questions. Uh, we'll be doing both of them. Both kinds of questions have purposes in conversation but we'll be using them to gain information and find out about our fellow classmates. Now, let's move on. We're gonna talk about our homework. No, God! Yes, we're gonna talk about homework. No, have... God, please, no! Yes, no! we have to talk no! homework. Yes, we do, we have no! to talk homework. Homework is something that we have to go through and work on. Now, I highly recommend Grab your workbook right now, bring it out. As we go through these questions, try to answer them. Write down your information. <laughs> wait, wait, just, just wait, 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 wait. Do this information with me, and then you won't have to worry about your homework. The homework will be almost finished. And you'll be able to turn it in and get your homework ready. So let's work on that homework together. So starting off. We have seven little dialogues here. And these seven dialogues have different information. And you need to read the dialogue and then decide what kind of a dialogue are they talking about? Are they talking about money? Are they talking about hobbies? Are they talking about their family and marriage? Are they talking about a personal problem? What is the, the topic that best describes that conversation? It is possible for more than one topic to fit, but you need to get at least one topic that fits. For example, dialogue A says, I want to go with you, but that's a really expensive trip. I know, but it's a great. You should come with us. Hmm, so what could they be talking about there? Well, because you said it's really expensive, they're probably talking about money, but they could also be talking about hobbies, traveling. And so with this, the whole conversation of what they're saying could be a different topic. And there are more than one that could go there. So take a look, read through the dialogues, try to figure out what you think the topic that describes that dialogue is. Feel free to write more than one because there could be more than one correct answer with each of these. It's what you think the rest of that conversation, the context that goes with that conversation. All right, and this finishes up the last two dialogues in there. And so that eight dialogues, eight different topics. Again, there can be more than one correct answer. Now, in the next one, we have to read an email and then answer some questions about it. Now, when we read emails, there's 
a lot of things that you have to be careful when you're doing electronic communication. You have to be very careful of the words that you choose. Uh, for all of my students, this is a quick little um, social etiquette or netiquette. When you're writing a message, or actually when you're trying to communicate with your professor or somebody that you're wanting help from or you need something from, it's always best to start off polite and nice. And the reason you want to start off polite and nice because once you become angry, once you become aggressive or demanding, nobody wants to help you. And you will actually get people who say, no, I'm not gonna help you. No, <laughs> you've been nice and stuff. I'm not gonna help you. I'm gonna make you just, yeah, you, you know what? You just wait right there. Six hours later. You know, um, I still gotta think about that. Uh, can you give me a little bit more time? Six hours later. Yeah. People, when you're talking to someone and you're wanting to get information or help, be nice. If people are rude to you, be nice. If people call you bad names, if people say bad things about you, you'll be nice. It's always good to be nice until the time comes. It's not important to be nice. When is that time? You won't know it until it happens, but be nice. Don't be the one who starts the anger. It's always best. For example, let's say that you're sending me an email wanting to talk about why your grade was a level. If you start off the email, teacher, why is my grade this? Give me an answer. I don't have to give you anything. I can just say, you know what? Mm -mm, no, no, no. I'm not going to help you. But if you come out, um, teacher, I have a question. Uh, I got this grade on this assignment the other day. Would you mind telling me why I got this grade? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Now, I'm going to help you. And when you give me that, I'm going to be glad to, to jump up and help you. Be nice. Now, I know some of you may say, well, teacher, how do I make sure it's nice when I'm using a translator? Read it out loud. Read your message out loud. See if it says or feels like the way you want it to say. And if it's something really important, ask someone else to help you read it. Now, when you're sending me emails, I'm going to understand that English is not your first language, your beginning level. I will take that into consideration and turn it into a learning activity. But double check it. Make sure it feels the way that you want to. Now, this email uh, is being sent uh, from Martin Maurice to Amir Aloub, and it's regarding uh, email buddies. So I'm going to read it out loud so that you can hear it and that you'll be able to answer whether or not these questions are true or false on your own. So it says, uh, hi, Amir. I'm glad we are going to be email buddies. It's a fun way to practice English. It's nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Mexico. I live in a small city and go to university there. I like to play soccer. I also play a lot of video games. My friend and I go to the beach when, I, when the weather is nice. We also like to go out and listen to music. Now, I live with my family right now, my parents, my brother, and my sister. My father has a small store and my mother's a teacher. My brother and sister go to school. Sometimes they bother me a little, but in general, we get along. I went to England this summer. It was a great trip. I met a lot of interesting people. Do you like travel? Did you go anywhere interesting on the trips last year? Where? What is your home like? What interests do you have? I hope to hear from you soon, Martin. Now, this is starting up email buddies or pen pals. Uh, when I was in 
uh, middle school and high school and into college, I had several pen pals. I still do have pen pals. I just don't get a chance to mail them as often as I would like to. The reason that I can't do that right now, <coughs> COVID, COVID, COVID-19. I can't send them off because it, right now sending any kind of package or letter to the United States is very expensive. And I love my friends, but uh, sending a letter for 25,000 won, no thank you. I'll wait till the prices come back. So this is where you need to find out ways to communicate. Now I have other ways that I communicate and that's what I do now. But now you gotta go back, read the questions about what's true. Now, when you're taking questions on a test, sometimes it helps to read the question first and then go look for the answer. And then sometimes it helps read the question, the, the dialogue and then look for the answers. Either way you wanna do it, it's all up to you. So for example, Martin and Amir, and Amir are good friends. Hmm. This is an introduction email. They probably don't know each other very well yet. So we're gonna to have to say, no, they're not good friends yet. All right, now moving on, we're gonna get into this part for our classwork on uh, next week. So when you come to class, be ready. And we have three questions here. That says, Do you think it's a good way to practice in English? Why or why not? Now, Good ways to practice English. I'll explain a few of them in class, uh, but finding out good ways, the best information I can give you about practicing your English is find out what you like in Korean or whatever language is your native language, whatever makes you happy, what you do for fun, and find that in English. For example, if you like to play League of Legends, a very popular game right now. League of Legends is very popular here in Korea. Go find a YouTube channel, talk about League of Legends in English. Great way to practice your English. That's not practicing English. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Now it says, write an email to introduce yourself to a student from another country. Now, we're not gonna do that as an actual email, but we'll practice that with you emailing each other in class. And we'll talk about that as part of our group work on our first class this next week. And so we'll talk about that. We'll practice writing emails. We'll talk about some more netiquette in class. All right, so our first class, first lesson, this one went a little long, a lot of stuff to talk about. So I want you to be ready, have some fun, enjoy talking to your friends, and get some information. Remember, asking the question, where are you from, does not necessarily mean that I want to know what country you're from. I could be asking something more. Find out four or five different ways that you can start a conversation and end the conversation. And get ready to talk about some of your own information, a difference of closed questions and open questions. That's gonna do it for today. Have a great and wonderful time. And I will see you in class again very soon. So have a good and wonderful time. Take care, bye-bye.